Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, we're going to explore frequent deloads. Are they better for hypertrophy or muscle building? Before we get into this topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas that turn into videos just like this. If you're interested in coaching, I'd love to work with you. Check out the link down below. All right, so there's a lot of conflicting opinions when it comes to deloading. And in this case, we're talking about deloading specifically for muscle building or hypertrophy. That can have some carryover, obviously, to strength building. But in this context, we're going to look at a study that was released by Dr. Brad Schoenfeld and his crew on deloading a week during a nine-week hardcore training block. Now, the paper is linked down below in the comments. It's called Gaining More from Doing Less, Dr. Schoenfeld's new deload paper. Now, I'm going to read the overview, and then I'm going to go share the next screen, and we're going to go through the abstract and the conclusion. Basically, the findings indicate no evidence of benefit to muscle resensitization or enhanced recovery from taking off a week in the middle of an intense higher volume RT block. Basically, they did a nine-week block. They took one week off in the middle, and they found no benefit at all when it came to hypertrophy. Now, I'm going to get into the massive iron deload philosophy at the end of this. All right, so here's the abstract, and I'm going to read it word for word so you guys can understand exactly what the study is saying. Based on emerging evidence that brief periods of cessation from resistance training, RT, may resensitize muscles to anabolic stimuli, we aim to investigate the effects of a one-week detraining interval at the midpoint of a nine-week RT, that's resistance training program, on muscular adaptations in resistance-trained individuals. This isn't on noobs, this is for resistance-trained individuals. 39 young men and women were randomly assigned to one of two experimental parallel groups, an experimental group that abstained from resistance training for one week at the midpoint of a nine-week high-volume RT program, which is a deload, one group deloaded, or a traditional training group that performed the same RT program continuously over the study period, the lower body routines were directly supervised by the research staff while upper body training was carried out in an unsupervised fashion. So that's an important aspect of the study. We need to take note of that when digesting the information. We do know the lower body routines were directly supervised. Outcomes included assessments of muscle thickness along proximal, mid, and distal regions of the middle and lateral quadricep femoris, as well as the mid-region of the tricep surae, lower body isometric and dynamic strength, lower local muscular endurance of the quadriceps, and lower body muscle power. Results indicated similar between-group increases in lower body muscle size, local endurance, and power. So basically, there was no difference between deloading and training the full nine weeks. Said similar muscle size, similar endurance, similar power, etc. Alternatively, TRAD showed, and again, TRAD is the non-deload group, greater improvements in both isometric and dynamic lower body strength compared to deload. In conclusion... Our findings suggest that a one-week detraining period at the midpoint of a nine-week RT program, resistance training program, appears to be negatively influenced, appears to negatively influence measures of lower body muscle strength, but has no effect on lower body hypertrophy, power, or local muscle endurance. Now I want to circle back to that point. It appears that the deload group had a negative impact on strength, this deload. So basically, the study is saying there's no real benefit to muscle or strength from deloading, frequent deloading. In fact, it could negatively impact your strength to a small degree over a nine-week period. And nobody wants that. Nobody wants to step back in their plus ones and have to climb that mountain again. It's extremely frustrating. Now, again, this is one study, and we don't want to get all fired up over, over one research paper. But it does have a lot of common sense in it. There is a lot of hype when it comes to frequent deloading, like somehow the body is that fragile. And look, if you feel there is benefit to frequent deloading, by all means, 
do frequent deloading. The big picture here and the big point is that we should be intuitive with our training. We should modify deloads or construct deloads or use days off to fit our needs, our body, and how we feel physically and not to somebody else's arbitrary BS standards. If there is an influencer or voice out there telling you that you must deload every four, six, or whatever weeks, laying out these blanket rules, trying to apply the same strategy to everybody and saying it's a must, this is a huge red flag. And when it comes to hypertrophy, it's a big red flag when anyone goes out there and starts to trumpet that this magical rule applies to everyone in every case. Now, what is a massive iron deload philosophy? Number one, we need to look at time off in the bigger picture over the course of a year. You want to schedule in time off when you have holidays coming up, when you have special events or birthdays. You got to pencil those things in. Those are natural time away from the gym. You also have to consider the fact that there's a likelihood you're going to get sick during the coming year, and you're going to take time away from the gym for that as well. There also, there also might be stressful periods of studying or work or whatever where you can't train up to full capacity. We have to factor that in. Beyond that, intuitive deloading, when you feel beat up or you feel mentally fatigued or just physically drained or say you have a poor sleep day and you're just not into it, then you can take a day off. But don't just plan an arbitrary week. That's kind of a foolish way to do things. Like if you have a bad workout or a bad day or you feel physically beaten up after leg day, don't go into the mental mindset that, hey, I got to completely take a week off that's arbitrary, that's completely unnecessary. Take things day by day. I'm going to take a day off. How do I feel? Maybe take another day off. Stay a little bit flexible and use common sense with your time away from the gym. We want to maximize our time in the gym during the course of a year. And there are many things that are trying to pull us away from the gym, sickness and holidays and all kinds of nonsense. So be smart about your deloads. One final point about deloading is that if you're bulking and cutting, doing the normal hypertrophy cycles of bulking and cutting, when you enter a cut, you're probably not going to be pushing as hard for PRs, right? You want to save those bullets for when you're really pushing hard during a bulk. So a cut, even though it's not a deload, it is a kind of desensitization period where we're not over pushing for PRs. We're being a little bit more safe with our training, being a little smarter so we don't get, injur get injured and trying to hold steady, getting ready for the next round of bulking. So guys, hope this video has been of some help. If you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. If you made it this far in this video and have yet to subscribe to my channel, please do. I'd appreciate the support. So guys, as always, thanks for watching. Have a great day.